that if you are uh, visiting us at this time, please do stay indoors. Uh, I can understand. Jan, yeah, appreciate you. I can understand. Uh, call it. I can understand someone pride of thinking I can. I can go wherever I want. <laughs> I'm going to go to the bars, or uh, I can drive in the 15 and go 75 like normal. It's everyone else who's the problem. I'm from Florida, or I'm from wherever, and there's bad weather all the time. No big deal. I can understand that pride. The pride I do not understand is, let's go swimming. If you don't fully understand the power of water, or you think you're stronger than the ocean plus a hurricane or a tropical storm, even, that that is a... Uh, that is a level of arrogance I cannot fathom at all. So, yeah, I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, but the fact that there's still, but the fact that there even has to be a lifeguard out there to say, "Hey, uh, beach is closed, man. There's no swimming now. What are you doing? Like that? You think that wouldn't even be necessary? One eight hundred seven sixty KFMB. I want to go one more." caller in Pacific Beach. Uh, we'll go to Mike, who's in PB. What's going on, Mike? How are you? Yo, how are you doing? Hey, good, man. Can you back uh, back up what Jan was just saying? Yeah, yeah, this guy just opened up a little while ago and uh, stepped out for just a second and got pretty wet. So, yeah, it's uh, it's coming down here. Oh, Mike, you are so PB. I love it. It's fantastic. Um, all right, so a couple, I think it was like January or so, we had some pretty bad storms, right? And uh, the, the storm surge was going up over the seawall in Mission Beach. I'm sure it was the same in PD, right? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Is there well, anything well, now, any surge going on now, or no? Uh, well, we're up on the hill. We're like a few blocks uh, up from the bottom. So um, we're about like 200 feet up on the hill, so there's like not a lot of flooding going on over here. Um, but I heard y'all talking, uh, touching on tornadoes in East County, potentially, right? Um, so just, uh, I, uh, I grew up in North Texas. I just wanted to, like, just give a couple of pointers if that is the case for some people, which is, one, uh, get into your bathroom, uh, preferably if there is no window in it. You want to be in a windowless room in the event of that happening. Um, bathrooms are preferable. Uh, the, uh, they vent outside to prevent, you know, pressure from happening. Um, and also when this is all said and done with, everybody please dump out your planters and bird baths and anything that's going to collect water because it's going to be warm and sunny afterwards. Uh, so tornadoes and mosquitoes just uh, to be on the, uh, the back of people's minds. Oh, whoa. Real quick, why go to the bathroom? Or why, why, what's up with the bathroom? Better than anywhere else? Bathroom, you, well, generally bathrooms are, if it's, if it's an interior bathroom, right? Two reasons, which is one, the plumbing reinforces the walls. And two, the uh, drains all vent outside. So when you have that big suction event outside, it equalizes the pressure the pressure between outside and inside. Whoa. Wow, that's amazing that that would make enough of a difference for that. Yeah, if you, uh, the, the, that movie Tornado, they show that when, like, they go inside and the water shoots out the pipes on the roof, that happens. Whoa. Do you mean the movie yeah. Twister? Yeah, Twister, with the cow, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can I can picture the front of the movie picture exactly. Helen Hunt would be the uh, the star of the movie. Uh, that was 25 years ago. Uh, okay, hey, great stuff, Mike. I appreciate that. Yeah, this. Uh, thanks for reminding me about the tornado one. I should have done more details. I'm sorry. Uh, so this was a bit ago. We can ask Cliff and the team uh, the status of this. The weather report gave a 40 percent chance that tornadoes can't break out. That's uh, you know, what does that mean? Uh, like a tornado that would come quick, where, we have no idea, and it was a huge area uh, that they gave, pretty much the entire east half of the county, so pretty far ways out. This isn't like, I don't mean east county, like El Cajon. Uh, you gotta go further out there. Uh, but all the way over to Arizona, and all the way up to Needles, so like pretty far range there. So let's pray that there's none of those, because that means we would have hurricane or tropical storm, Earthquake and tornadoes all in the same back of the woods. 1-800-600, Kogum, 1-800-600. Mike has, Mike, he says he spent time in North Texas, but he doesn't he have a Texas accent. He had a PB accent. Very, very clear. 1-800-600, Kogo, 1-800-600, Kogo. We'll take your phone calls next as well. Where are you? What are you seeing? Do you have power? Is it coming down yet? Or like an hour ago, Mike, or someone called it from South Park. He's like, that's ah, nothing. Nothing at all. No rain. Nary a drop. Where are you? What are you seeing? 1-800-600-KOGO.
Kogo on AM 600. Kogo, spread the word. It's the DeMaio Report. A bill passed in San Francisco that allows illegal immigrants to vote for school board races. And of course, I oppose it strenuously. Weekday afternoons at 3 on News Radio 600. Kogo. Guys, fellas, men, are you Roman ready for a better sex life? Check out Roman. Roman has medication clinically proven to help you perform in bed. For 20% off your entire first order, go to ro.co slash better. That's ro.co slash better. California energy rebates are back. Call Phil Howell Plumbing, Heating, and Air and save money when you switch from gas to electric with clean energy heat pumps. Call 1-800-PHIL-HOWELL. There are more identity threats than you realize. Even if you monitor your credit, only a little personal info needs to leak out, like your social security number or password. Or you did any kind of a victim. LifeLock alerts you to threats you could miss. If your identity is stolen, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions, but everyone can save up to 25% off their first year with promo code NEWS. Go to LifeLock.com. Hey there, Aztec fans. Aztec Volleyball returns to Peterson Gym on August 31st to start the 2023 season. The Aztec home slate features opponents such as Oregon, Pepperdine, and UC Santa Barbara. Tickets are as low as $6 at the door, or you can order your season tickets online today at GoAztecs.com. Again, that's GoAztecs.com. Or call 619-283-SDSU. 619-283-SDSU. Go Aztecs! Right now, there are young people across the world facing a tough choice. Continue their dream of education or drop out to help their family put food on the table. You can help change their future in a single moment. See how far your support can go at Unbound.org. Hillary is still on its way. It is ready. We have hundreds of additional city employees on hand. And we give you the latest news and information right now. Mission Valley around Fashion Valley Mall, the Tijuana River Valley. These are areas that folks will want to avoid. News Radio 600 Coco Stormwatch continues. Mission Valley, always. Uh, Tijuana River Valley, so the border. Uh, Otay Mesa, Southcrest, which is in Barrio Logan. I mean, if you're around there, you know where it is. Uh, and then Carmel Valley. So those are the five most likely. And now it's not a good time to talk about this, but uh, insurance doesn't cover flood. I only feel the reason to say that now because I feel like that should have been said these last couple of days. People are like, oh, well, you know, we got insurance. Like, mm, no, you don't. You don't have flood insurance. Unless you do, but you have to do it. You have to buy flood insurance. It's very, very expensive. But we will address that tomorrow. 1-800-600-COGO. 1-800-600-COGO. Let me know one last thing. Your, your insurance doesn't cover flooding unless wind causes the water to get in your house. But that's really hard to prove, and insurance companies don't really uh, believe you. Go to Cheryl, who is in Ramona. 1-800-600-COGO. Tell us where you are and uh, what you're up to, what you're seeing right now. Cheryl, how are you? Oh, good, sir. It's good to talk to you. Um, it's, we don't have uh, a deluge going on here. It's just a nice, beautiful, soft rain. It kind of reminds me of what people tell you about God, you know, like he's dead or he's mad at you and he's ready to bop you. When he turns out to be actually a really a nice guy who has a good plan for us and uh, plan for pro- to prosper us and uh, give us hope and a future. And this is a good soaking rain. Uh, we much need it. And I live next to a river, so I was kind of concerned might flood and uh, nothing like that. It's just a beautiful thing. Uh, it it's kind of seems like the uh, fear stuff going on again, trying to make people afraid and close the churches and all that stuff. Cheryl, I appreciate the call very much. Thank you. Um, I, I will add to that that everything you just said about God is also true if a Category 4 storm hit you and destroyed your house and loved one. That is still true that God is good. 1-800-600-COGO. 1-800-600-COGO. Uh, on the point about 
over exaggerating and fear. The media's got to, you know, you don't do enough, and then you get criticized. Where were you? You do a little too much, you know, and then it turns out not to be as much, and you're like, oh, well, come on, you guys. So, <laughs> so try to walk the line, be honest, appropriate, fair. It's the, oh, I said earlier, it's a giant county. Our county is bigger than half of the states in the country, land mass wise and population wise. Like we're right in the middle. I think we're the 25th biggest so state. If we were state, uh, so it's broad. So Ramon is one thing, but PB is different. Everyone's in a different scenario here, so we got to balance that as well. Um, but I have no desire to exaggerate at all. I saw one one of the weather guys. Not a weather guy. This would be uh, like, a, like one of the uh, like an AccuWeather. One of those like meteorologists. Listen to the Idaho Massacre on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Guys, fellas, men, are you Roman ready for a better sex life? Check out Roman. Roman has medication clinically proven to help you perform in bed. For 20% off your entire first order, go to ro.co slash better. That's ro.co slash better. This is Radio 600 Coco. KOGO and KMYI HD2 San Diego. Live, local, breaking. News Radio 600 Coco Stormwatch Update. I'm Phil Farrar in the Coco News Center, and this is a Coco News Stormwatch Update. It is evening now. More rain falling. We've been telling you about downed trees, mudslides, heavy rains pockets of rains in the area caused by Tropical Storm Hillary, and also heavy winds. Those winds also went Interstate 8, and we are getting more calls about traffic problems. California Highway Patrol Sergeant Brian Pennings joins us on the Coco Newsline. Sarge, if you have to drive, well, if you don't have to drive, that's the big thing, and you don't need to be out there, if you need to go out, what should you do? Well, as you said, uh, Phil, we prefer everybody to stay home where it's nice and safe. Uh, but if you have to drive, we ask you to, number one, slow down. And even if you think you're going slow, it may not be slow enough. Uh, so be very, very, very careful. Also, make sure you have a safe following distance between you and the vehicles in front of you. Uh, and the last thing, and possibly the most important thing, is what we call high visual horizon. So we need you to look, or need the drivers to look as far down the road as they can possibly see, so that they can predict and perceive what's going to happen in front of them. Sergeant Brian Pennings from CHP. Sarge, where have you seen the most problems so far, or has it been sporadic and all over? Well, numbers-wise, mostly in the city of uh, San Diego. Last, I, as of about two hours ago, was the last time I ran the numbers. We were up to 123 crashes in San Diego and uh, and that does not count the crashes that we weren't able to get to before they left or simple spin outs uh, those are just documented collisions so we're very busy we have uh, we have gone to 12 hour shifts we brought in every every available uniformed officer we're out there and uh, and we're handling the calls as they come in but uh, it's, uh, it's the con- the majority of the numbers is in the city, but as you said, though, there it's sporadic throughout the county as far as the flooding and the um, and the mudslides. We have a massive rock slide out in Incopod, just right there by the Desert View Tower. You drop down into the desert uh, uh, from uh, Hakumba to Ocotillo. Uh, there's boulders that are the size of cars that came down that that mountain and is blocking the eastbound lanes. Uh, so we're, we're we're experiencing uh, all of that as, as a result of the flooding. Now, he's talking about Incapa, and what they're doing out there is they are running Caltrans, from what I understand, Sarge. They're closing a portion of the road for 15 at 15-minute 15 intervals so you can go uh, either way because, as you said, these boulders, once again, big as SUVs, big as cars. Yeah, you're correct, Bill. In fact, uh, when we get off... Wanna, I'll send you a few pictures if you don't have them, or you can go on online with our thing. I posted some pictures and some video of, of that scene so your viewers can take a look at it. Uh, but, yeah, they, they're, they're massive boulders that are blocking those eastbound lanes. You can't simply just push them out with a dozer. I, I don't know how they're going to be able to get those boulders out, but it's going to take some significant effort. 
And they have to implode them. I've seen that before where they'll put dynamite sticks in and implode those boulders instead of trying to cut them up. But that is a major, major problem way out in the far east uh, off of I-8 in Capo. Uh, we know where that is. And boy, you see those boulders on the side of the, of the highway. And you always think, are those going to come down? And uh, obviously we've gotten enough rain and they, they, they have come down. Any place else uh, to worry about? We know well, we're going to get more rain. Uh, well, uh, you know, I know your viewers are mostly in San Diego. We've had significant flooding out in Palm Springs in the desert um, uh, area. Uh, if you're planning on going out there, or you know somebody out there, or whatnot, the, uh, the, it, those low-lying areas are flooding quite heavily. Um, I've also posted some of the videos and uh, pictures from that as well. But uh, as far as the mountain areas, be uh, careful because of the high winds. Yes. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's like I said, just slow down, be careful. Don't go out unless you have to. And uh, please, please be careful. Sergeant Brian Pennings from the CHP. Always a pleasure to talk to you, sir, and we thank you for all of the men and women who are out there. This is like maximum enforcement. Drivers, please be careful watching our CHP officers and other law enforcement as they try to keep you safe. Brian Pennings, thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. You have a great day. All right, we're talking about flooding. Let's go live to Pacific Beach and Jan uh, Darwin, who is there. She's been there all day. Jan, what's the situation? Well, Phil, right now the wind is the big problem. It's really not a flooding issue down here at the beach right now. We're not having a storm surge problem, but what we are having, and this happened, I think right about our uh, the report last hour, that wind, I mean, it picked up and it is dumping those palm branches down on the street, so driving can be kind of hazardous. But right now, I'm at the uh, 710 Beach Club uh, down by the pier on Garnett, and it is one of only uh, three or four bars that are open down here, and there has been a steady stream of people. I was here earlier this afternoon, and there were maybe 10 or 15 people, and now the place is filling up to the extent that owner Joe Bartling doesn't have time to speak with us because he's so busy serving the customers here. Phil? Jim, you know, we talked earlier about about the, the, the possible flooding and the swells, and you said the swell really hadn't developed. Since you left South Mission Bay, what have you seen now? Have you seen more rain on the streets? You said it's dry, but the wind, as we well know, that water can come up underneath and head towards the streets. Are the streets pretty wet? No, no, they're actually not. And uh, the streets are, are passable as far as water. In fact, right now, you know, I'm standing in the middle of Garnett, and it's completely dry. With the exception uh, of those trees. I mean, there are trees. puddles of water, just, you know, like there would be after a rainstorm. But the real issue is the debris in the road. The debris is still coming down from these trees. Um, it's a hazardous situation in terms of... Uh, of mainly the palm fronds that are just dropping and dropping and dropping. Dan Darwin from Kogo's news department who is out covering. Thank you, Jan. And once again, she said, you know, the big problem is those fronds and all of the debris. And as you heard, CHP said most of the accidents, once again, are in the city of San Diego. Governor Newsom says he's been driving all around SoCal and witnessed several accidents. Common sense, just do your best, be safe. Uh, if you don't have an essential reason to be out there, don't. And, you know, if you're passing the CHP, which I was with, maybe you want to slow down. Maybe. Newsom says Southern California has dealt with their fair share of major incidents. Uh, you got pros. You got folks that have reps. <laughs> we were just out here how many months ago? With all those rain bombs and atmospheric rivers. The president or the governor says President Biden called him to tell him he's happy with the state's response to Tropical Storm Hillary. Southern California also dealing not only with a tropical storm, but now an earthquake. Seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones says earthquakes are unpredictable, but she's not too worried about this one. 
There is nothing about an earthquake that tells us it has to be a foreshock. Every earthquake has about a 5% chance of being followed by something larger. A magnitude 5.1 earthquake hit Ventura County this afternoon. In the town of Ojai, people across Southern California reported feeling the quake as the region braces for the heaviest impact of Tropical Storm Hillary as more rain is scheduled this evening. Can you get any lower than this? Death Valley National Park closed because of flooding caused by Storm Hillary. The National Park Service says it's expecting unprecedented levels of rainfall and flash flooding has already begun in the park which is located near the California border with Nevada. Death Valley National Park was closed last year because of heavy rains which required extensive repair to rebuild roads. Next storm watch update 6:30 on News Radio 600 Coco. This report is sponsored by Gold Co. In Trouble in Oceanside on 5 northbound before 76, a crash has the three right lanes blocked. Traffic is stopped and go from Mission Avenue. National City got a tree that fell down on the roadway. 805 northbound at Plaza Boulevard. It is on the on-ramp. That's San Diego traffic. Look, our money is being attacked from every angle. Inflation, rate hikes, banks failing. That's why thousands of Americans have decided to protect it with gold and silver. Gold Co. can help you diversify your money, and you can get up to $10,000 in free silver. Call 855-707-GOLD. During peak wildfire season, one spark in dry, windy conditions can put our communities at risk. That's why, as a last resort, SDG&E may need to call a power shutoff for public safety. We only power down where absolutely necessary. And once the threat has passed, our team works quickly and safely to restore power to affected communities. Learn more about public safety power shutoffs at sdge.com slash PSPS. Wherever news happens, stay connected, stay informed. News Radio 600, Kogo, Hillary Storm coverage. Listen on your radio or on the free iHeart app. News Radio 600, Kogo. In the Kogo News Center, Cliff Albert here along with Delana Bennett. Coming up next, we're going to be talking with San Diego City Councilman Stephen Whitburn. And you're going to want to hear what he has to say about the response to the storm and also about the homeless situation and protecting the people who are homeless on our streets in that particular situation that we're all in. But first, uh, Delana, you've got a little bit of news item for us. Yeah, I do. We just got an alert that San Diego Community College has canceled all classes tomorrow. So just so you know that, we already know San Diego Unified has canceled their classes. Poway Unified going ahead with school tomorrow at this point. Um, the Red Cross has just told us that they have opened their shelters in San Diego and Riverside counties. So those are available to people who may need them. All right, let's uh, welcome to COGO this evening City Councilman Stephen Whitburn. Of course, uh, he also serves as chairman of the Metropolitan Transit System Board. And welcome to COGO, Stephen. Cliff, thank you very much. Elena, thank you very much. It's really good to be with you. And let me just say how much I appreciate COGO's coverage of this storm, keeping people informed about its progress and its impacts. That is so vital to keeping people safe. So uh, on behalf of the city, I really appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you saying that because we've all worked very hard, and I know some people will be uh, letting us know from time to time over the last couple of days, well, you know, you guys are overdoing it, but you know what? This is a very serious and dangerous situation, and we need to make sure that everybody's well informed. So your thoughts on uh, what this storm has meant to San Diego so far and, and the response? It's been really interesting about the different impacts in different places. You know, we just heard from Jan over in Pacific Beach. She was talking about uh, the dry streets, but the windy conditions. I'm downtown, and we've got wet streets, and it's not particularly windy here. Uh, and, of course, uh, as we heard over in the far east county, they've got a much uh, more severe situation over there with those boulders down yeah. on uh, the eight. Um, around the central part of San Diego, we've had a lot of traffic accidents. Uh, we had that little mudslide on the 94. Uh, there's a power outage that we had recently in Pacific Beach, scattered wires down here and there. Overall, the uh, impacts have been manageable so far, uh, but it's going to be getting dark here uh, pretty soon, and it's going to be harder to see out on the freeways. Uh, and so we're encouraging people to stay indoors if possible, uh, and to stay up to date uh, on the city's website. Uh, we've got a list of all the uh, road closures and other storm impacts uh, within the city limits, and people can go to that and see it at 
sandiego.gov slash storm. Stephen, can you please urge people to not drive around barriers? Because uh, we just talked to the CHP and they said already 123 crashes and they've had to go in and help people get out of flooded situations. So um, <laughs> just uh, yeah. I would love it if you re would reiterate that. I am happy to reiterate that. You know, every year, even in a simple thunderstorm, we have flooding in Mission Valley where the San Diego River uh, rises above some of the streets there. And in preparation for that, uh, city crews put up barricades uh, so the people uh, would know not to uh, cross those areas. And we have got numerous reports of people going around the barricades. Uh, and uh, that is simply dangerous. Those barricades are there for the benefit uh, and uh, in an effort to keep everybody safe. And if the water level rises above those streets, people go around the barricade and get stuck, then that just ties up our city emergency crews trying to uh, help folks get out of that situation. So please, better safe than sorry. Take a couple extra minutes, take the long way, uh, and, and don't go through those barricades and get yourself into a flooded situation. Well, it hasn't been that long ago. We had all the rain in the uh, this last winter season, and there were a couple of cases of uh, people driving their cars into the flooded streets and getting stuck and having to be rescued. So, you know, go around those as does all traffic. But by and large, uh, things are uh, on, on track uh, for our bus and trolley service. If there are additional impacts, uh, we will be putting those on the NTS website, and people can check that out. Uh, if you go to fdnts.com uh, and go to the alerts and KMI in the sky and see the faster on Saturday. Stephen, you were involved, obviously, with the mayor, and it was mentioned at the new protection included. Get rare deals on select laptops and desktops powered by the latest Intel Core processors. Save now at Dell.com slash deals. UNICEF does not endorse any company, brand, product, or service. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? message uh, is part of an in-depth look at some of Christ's most memorable parables. Living outdoors uh, are as possible. That started uh, with some outreach to uh, residents uh, living down uh, near the riverbed along the San Diego River. You've got a lot of people living down there, uh, some of them pretty close to the water, uh, which was a real concern because, uh, as we've been talking about, that river rises, it can rise quickly, uh, and we don't want anybody to get uh, swept away. Uh, and so we had crews uh, down there uh, making sure people were aware of the coming storm, uh, inviting them to accept shelter. Uh, some did. Uh, and otherwise making sure that people knew that they had to get to higher ground and to be watchful for the rising water. One of the other things we did was, uh, as you mentioned, Cliff, we have a new safe sleeping site at the city maintenance yard at 20th and B. Uh, we've had about 130-some folks uh, take us up on the offer to stay there, get off the streets, get off the parks, and uh, go to a safer, healthier place. They've done that. That's good. But with the rain and storm coming, we thought uh, that they needed to get indoors, so we transferred all of those folks over to Golden Hall downtown, the, the Civic Center Plaza there. Uh, so they're indoors, they're safe. Um, and we also opened up several uh, inclement weather uh, shelter uh, options for people where we add shelter beds during uh, storms like this, usually in the winter, but uh, this time in August. Uh, we've got about 200 additional beds available for people uh, at Father Joe's, at the Rescue Mission, at the Path. Uh, there's a church downtown that's accepting folks as well. So we've really, uh, and this is, you know, hats off to our, our city employees. They've really gone above and beyond to try to make sure that everybody, uh, both housed and unhoused, uh, makes it safely through this storm. This problem of the homelessness in San Diego, and as in most other major cities, it's such a uh, perplexing one that uh, you certainly have been involved in in terms of trying to find the right answers, the, the, the proper things that we can do to help and still allow people to uh, obviously be safe, number one, and it's a public health issue as well. How frustrating has it been as a member of the San Diego City Council, because everybody asks you, I'm sure, about the homeless situation in San Diego and what to do about it. How perplexing, how difficult, and how frustrating has it been for you and, and other city leaders? 
It has been the biggest challenge that our city has faced. It's been uh, the biggest frustration that my constituents have faced and that I think all San Diegans have faced. Because on one hand, uh, we all see it as a humanitarian challenge. Uh, it is unsafe and unhealthy for people to be out there. I mean, this storm is a perfect example of why it is unsafe. Uh, for people to be living in tents uh, in the riverbed and in our parks and in our canyons. Uh, and you've got people who are coming down with disease and uh, all kinds of things. So we just can't have people uh, living outdoors like this. It's also been a challenge for uh, city residents because many times people feel unsafe when there's uh, a large encampment that is uh, on the block that they live on or if they uh, come downtown or they're going to a Padres game and uh, it looks concerning. Uh, and we don't want people to feel unsafe due to any kind of uh, erratic behavior. Uh, sometimes you have large amounts of debris around those encampments. It's just not a uh, a good thing for our neighborhoods either. So trying to find uh, solutions to that, of course, is a challenge because, uh, you know, some of it uh, certainly is the economic challenges that uh, people face that oftentimes result in homelessness uh, due to our high rents in San Diego. Uh, but then also you've got some folks who have other challenges with mental health problems or addiction problems. So there's a lot of different things that have to be attended to. Uh, and I think we have to do them all, but we also have to have rules. And I, you know, brought forward the ordinance uh, that said that you can't uh, camp on city property if there is a shelter bed available, uh, and we are enforcing that now. Uh, but along with that, we also opened up the safe sleeping site uh, to give people an additional place to go, uh, and we're going to be opening up another safe sleeping site uh, in a month or two here. So we're trying to uh, tell people you can't live in an unsafe and healthy condition, but also offer them a safer and healthier option. So do you, um, Stephen, do you work with other nonprofits here in San Diego County to come up with a plan for that type of thing? Because it seems to me that that would be a really, really tough thing to do, move people into a safe uh, sleeping situation. So um, I'm assuming, you know, there is some type of board, some type of um, meeting that uh, everybody got together and, and they decided how to do this, how to move people. We are very fortunate uh, in San Diego to have a number of nonprofit organizations that are working to assist people experiencing homelessness in various ways. Uh, at the city of San Diego, we've got uh, our own uh, Homeless Strategies and Solutions Department. Uh, we've got the San Diego Housing Commission, which is heavily involved in it. Uh, we have a regional task force on homelessness. So there are a lot of different uh, agencies and nonprofits uh, working on this. Uh, in terms of getting people to the safe sleeping site, it's actually been easier than you might think. You know, when I went during the point in time count, uh, which was an annual count of unsheltered people uh, across the city, I asked a number of people who were living on the sidewalks, uh, you know, if they would accept a indoor shelter bed. And a number of them said, no, they didn't want to go indoors because maybe they valued their privacy or they were concerned about getting COVID-19 or they felt claustrophobic in that environment. And when I asked them if they would be willing to accept uh, a, a safe sleeping site that, you know, isn't on the sidewalk, uh, you know, around businesses and homes, but is in a safer and healthier place, every single person I asked said yes, they would accept that because they didn't want to be on the streets, but they just did want to be outdoors. So that's why we have launched the Safe Sleeping Program to get folks off the streets and into a better place. Uh, that's better for our neighborhoods. It's better for the people experiencing homelessness. And people have actually volunteered to come to the safe sleeping site uh, on their own. And a number of our nonprofits have actually driven people uh, over there. So it's been pretty easy to, to get.